because we do have that. Okay, class, let's get started again. We got uh, analyzing graphs of functions here. I did this. And voila, I got all that done. Okay, so now the question is, if you go from the start of the graph to the end of the graph, that is called our domain. Whoa. Whoa, I know, super cool. <clears throat> and then anything from the lowest part of the graph to the highest part of the graph, we're going to call the range. Okay, so we did it in terms of function notation last time. <clears throat> now we're doing it in terms of graphs. Okay, so now we have a filled in little dot right there. That whenever you have a filled in dot, that means you are including the point. And then if you have an open dot, you guys have it. It's not included in our graph. Okay, we're good there. Difference between a closed so dot and open dot. Include, included meaning, wait, or what is it included? Sure, yeah, closed dot just means you want that dot to be part of your, your graph. And then a open dot means you don't want to include it in there. What's the point of having the open dot if you don't want it to be included? Is it just there to like show kind of Yeah, show that you're not including that dot, yeah. Uh huh. Um, is it a placeholder? Because there really would be no use for it. Oh, but if you didn't put anything there, but if putting it there means it's not, not included, it's, it's, it's circular. Gotcha. So here it is. Okay. He, he understands. <clears throat> so uh, if you're having a graph, the question is right at 6, because we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in our domain. Right here, right at oh, x so equals 6, the question is do you include that point or not include that point? And this one is eh, not including it. We're good? Um, where does that work? Uh, let's see, it works in um, sending out mail, going to the post office. And so whenever you send out a letter, and if it's over so many ounces, so you get one stamp, right? One stamp, you can have a letter, wrong pen. There it is, okay. So if we wanna, if we wanna, anybody send out like a huge big envelope that got returned back to you? Okay, cool, okay. So okay, I got three people saying yes. So stuck one, one stamp on there, thought it was all good, right? You put it in the mailbox and you're like, that's so cool. And about like a week and a half later, it returns back to your house and it says, not enough postage. And you're like, what? And it was like usually like seven or eight pages worth, right? That is about the border. Like if you have like more than seven pages that's stuck inside an envelope, it needs more than one stamp. We good? So, so let's do this here. The y value is going to be one stamp. The next value will be two stamps. So, if you're sending nothing out, do you need a stamp? No. Yes. yes. You're so no. no. Okay. Wait, so. What do you mean by sending nothing? Are you, like, you're sending down. <laughs> 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 you're just sending out. <laughs> so, yeah. Eli, if you send, if if you're sending nothing, what does no, that I mean, usually mean? Like <laughs> yeah. So here it is. Here's well, our that, first. That wouldn't be nothing then. That here's be our air. first dot. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm thinking. By definition, it would be sent. I'm thinking the dot is. If you're not sending out, you don't need to stand. We good? But if you're sending out even 0.5 of an ounce, right, you need one stamp. Now the question is, once you get to four ounces, it would still be okay. So seven pages flipped into an envelope with one stamp is still okay. We good? But once it crosses the 4.1 ounce marker as it gets weighed on the machine, we good? Then it's not good. It gets returned to you. A week and a half later. So I'm going to use a closed dot right here because at exactly four ounces, well, that was a weird, at exactly four ounces, it's still okay. But once it crosses into the 4.1 ounce category, I need more stamps. I need two stamps. Now the question is this. One second, Eli. Just one second. Right at four ounces for the two, is it open dot or closed dot right here? 
Is it this or this? Open. It's open. Oh. Yeah. It's closed. It's open because it can be after two. It can oh, be four ounces, right? <clears throat> yeah, so write it four ounces. If it's 4.000 ounces, does the letter go through or goes back? It still goes through, right? Mm -hmm. That four ounces, right? It's still okay. Which is like 4.000 ounces. Then they were in trouble. <clears throat> but their scales only go up to by by tenths. No, no. 4.0, still okay, right? Gets crossed. 4.1, and so notice, it has to be an open dot because we're saying, hey, if they did have a scale, like Eli says, 4.000001, that would not be okay, right? So anything after four is our problem. But we have to include the four as one stamp. So notice what happens here. Now you got two stamps, we good? And then it goes up to eight ounces. Now I'm not sure if you can stuff 14 sheets of paper. But exactly at four ounces, you're still okay with two stamps. Are we good? Ben, does that answer your question about open dot or closed dots? Do you think that you like balance out the package with heels so we don't really I'm not even going to go there. You want to just say. Okay. We're going to go back into domain and range. So ready? What is my domain of this function? Well, it starts off at where? What do you guys say? Negative three. Negative three. Ooh, are we including negative three? Yes, so to include, we've got to have some notation for inclusion. Inclusion negative 3 means we put a bracket. Bracket negative 3 means we are including the negative 3 in our domain. And we're going all the way up to? Seven. Seven. Six. Six. Eight. Including the 6 or no? No. No. So we have a different notation called parentheses. So including stuff. Awesome. <coughs> All right, so we got range on our hands. Range now is we're looking from low to high. Oh, I forgot to put this, let me put the little red dot, red tick mark. Okay, what's the lowest, lowest point of this graph? Negative one, including negative one? Yeah, because the line kind of goes down, right? Whenever the line is solid, it's including it. So bracket, we're good. Bracket negative one up to? Seven, good, good, okay, I'm gonna go seven. Seven, up and down, uh-huh, and we are done, we good? So that was just kind of like the intro to it. Now let's look, take a look at some graphs themselves. Cool. And I'm just looking to see if people are done writing things down, and then we go from there, we good? Jamming, okay, how about this one here, example one. And okay, we're going to go from the graph. From the graph, find the domain and range. All yours. All right, graphing this guy here, easy one to starters here. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna print one, two, three, and I'm gonna go like this. So it comes down, V-shape goes up. So there it is. Wait, do the lines keep on going, or is it? Yeah, arrows just means lines keep on going. Now, the only thing is inside your textbooks, we'll get to those, right? Sometimes the graph cuts off, right? There's no arrows, right? But you assume if the line goes all the way up to the end of the picture, you just assume it keeps on going. That's kind of the assumption there. Okay, then all yours here to write it in and then try it yourself or wait for me, however you would like. Oh, let's see, let's check it out. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this together. So domain is? All real numbers. All good. So notice this little guy is going to go off this way, right? So as you, as you start looking, like, where's the beginning of this thing? Yes. There is no beginning to this thing. We're good? It's going to keep on going forever that way. Ours, the example that we had, it stopped, right? So we could say all real numbers. That's fine. And notice if you go this way, the arrow keeps on going, and then we never reach the end of this line. Because whenever you, you say, hey, 12... I can always, if you say x equals 12, I can always get to the line. We're good? If I say x equals a million, I can always start here, and I can go up, and I can still get to my line. We're good? 
Cool. All right, notation for it is like this. You could say all real numbers, that's fine. Or you can say from negative infinity to positive infinity. That is all good to go. Cool. What's my range? Is What's it not brackets? Ooh, perfect. Good, good, good. So with infinity and negative infinity, you don't ever put brackets. The range it's always it. The range of it is also infinite. Maybe. Yeah, Maya, good. Okay, so I understand that it keeps going and that's why it's all real numbers, but my question is, so you have a close thought at uh, positive 3 on the line, so does that play into anything? Because I was thinking, like, I don't know, I'm a little Oh, gotcha, yeah. Uh, closed dot... <clears throat> it's not supposed to be a closed dot because it's just the highlighter coming down like this and I okay. switch the highlighter to go this way. Oh, okay. so it's... that's the problem. <clears throat> Range. Now, question is, is there a low point to this graph? Zero. Oh, yeah, it is zero, huh? Because oh. down here, there is no graph. Where's my graph? <clears throat> my graph starts at zero, including zero or no? Yes. Now you can think of the closed dot if you want now. So closed dot at zero and then go off to... Infinity. Infinity always has a parenthesis. Awesome. No. All right. My next graph here. A little bit more fun. Oh, the last, one last one, it would be a bracket, zero to infinity. Oh, okay. Let me go back real quick here. I think you should, right there. Oh. Cool. And, ooh, let's see if I, let's see if it'll do what I want it to do here. Yeah, it does. All right, and of course. So guys, these ones, it's not like I'm just giving you examples upon examples to do the same stuff. We good? So each one has a slightly different thing to it. We good? Cool. All right, and if you want to guess it yourself, go for it. You want to try it? That's cool too. Oh, and then, of course, the honesty question. Raise your hand if you looked at 1.5, just kind of opened up the book, and you looked at 1.5 before coming to class today. No. Oh, no. So we're going to try, like every single time, just crack open the book and just scan what you're going to be learning. Just And if you want to be really cool, cool, and you have nothing else to do, you have total extra time on your board, you can even try some of the example problems yeah. yourself. I really don't. I'll have a lot of free time. Being a focused student, free time is. Uh uh. Okay. So, domain. Domain is. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So, it looks like I have. Man, doesn't it look like at negative two, it stops here, right? And then it starts here, right? There's almost like this little gap that's formed. Are we good there? So I'm thinking like this. I'm thinking from negative infinity because it goes on forever here. Oh, there's a gap. There's a gap. There's a gap. I thought they were Okay, okay. It's negative infinity, comma, Bracket or parenthesis? Um, uh, Uh huh. Say again. Yes, positive yeah. infinity. Go ahead. Yes, uh huh. Awesome. Good job. That's so cool. So look at this one here. So notice that there's a there's a there's a gap here, right? But then at zero, there's a gap, but it's not a gap along the x-axis. It's a gap along the y-axis. So once you get to like negative point zero zero one, you're using this graph. Once you get to zero, you jump using this graph, but there is no gap for the x's. We're good? 
So anything close to zero on the left hand side is still, we can still num find numbers. Anything at zero, we find numbers. And anything after little zero, we still find numbers. We're good. Jay, do you have your question? No? Okay. All right, range. Let's go with the range. Range is a funny one this time. Are you guys ready? Oh, I got this. Because they're all horizontal lines, they're individual points, right? They're not, they're not spreads or intervals of things. So for individual points, what we do is we write a, we write a, we call it braces. We write it like this. So what is the, la the lowest one we have? Uh, negative three. Negative three, uh-huh, negative three. Then we got what, negative two? And then? And then one, yep, okay, so those guys, boom, like that right there. So if you wanna write a little something in here, just put individual points. So these, we call them braces, or you can call them set notation. Funny brackets. Mm -hmm. Funny squirrelies. Okay, so that's for individual points, um, and then parentheses are for ranges of points. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Not ranges in range, but like yes. ranges uh -huh. in like a range. Of we call them intervals, yeah. Intervals. Uh -huh. right. Intervals to keep straight in our heads. Okay, and let's jam. Tell me if you need to go back, otherwise we'll yeah, keep on going here. Go yeah. Yep, sure, sure. Yeah. All the since the beginning of time. Oh, you like Okay, good. Uh-huh. So, did you have a question or no? Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. Just thought you had your hand raised or something. Okay. Okay, the fun part. Here it is. Boom, boom. Some of those were like not included in the circle, but you still remember. Let's go look at them. Absolutely. Um, real quick here, because I know learning. I've learned once as a student, right? It's almost like your brain processes something, right? And then they're like, "Hey, but hold on, let's wait," right? So I totally want to answer those questions because that's your like brain is engaged. So Jaden, ask the question. Go ahead. Uh, why did you include the? Open circles if they're not included. Ah, oh, okay. So as we're looking this way across for our domain, right? We're just looking for any gaps. So we did not include negative two because of that gap there. We did include negative one because it was a solid. Good there? So as we're looking across, as we get to zero, there could be another gap, but no, there isn't because right at zero, it jumps over here. So even though there's a gap between the graphs themselves, there's no gap along the x-axis. There's nothing that says, and what I mean by gap is this right here. If I say, hey, what's the value of this graph at a negative 1.5? And you should also say, Mr. H, Mr. H, if you're wrong, there's no graph at 1.5, we're good? But I say, hey, what's the graph? Is there a graph point, or, or what is the value at a negative 0 0.001? And everybody says? <clears throat> negative two, obviously, right? Jaden, does that answer your question? Yeah, what was the negative three is just because So then on the range, now we're looking this way. We're looking from lowest to highest. So I say right at negative three, I have myself a graph. <clears throat> at negative two, I have myself a graph. And at positive one, I have myself a graph. And, but they're individual points as opposed to intervals. Cool. Piecewise function? Piecewise function? Yeah. No. no. Would this be a piecewise yeah. function? Yes, it would be. Uh huh. Yeah, because uh, from so and so to so and so, it's negative three. And so and so, it's at two. Uh huh. All right, we're jamming. There it is. Here's my graph. I go down like this, I go across like this, and done. <coughs> All right, and if you want to try it yourself, go no. for it. And that, that, mean. that is a function because they're not going directly up or directly down. Perfect, yeah. Uh -huh. We call these vertical asymptotes. Um, technically, this is called a reciprocal function. It's just one function. And we'll, we'll graph those. That's 2.6 and 2.7. Start graphing these guys. All right. 
jamming. Okay, you guys give me some guesses here. Oh, I guess I better put some scales here. There's some scales there. Even though, if there's no scale, usually assume one. All right, domain. Anybody want to try it? Weston? I go with that. U for union, and then we cut it off after two, and we go off forever. Okay, are we good there? So, what's the what's the math justification for like uh, for it never getting to two, or like uh -huh. what what happens like? Then you do one point nine 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 close to two. Uh huh. Yeah, one point nine 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 nine, but not two. Um, just never, just... Yeah, let me give you an example here once we like move around. Like repeating? Um, not so much repeating is that you can't get to that point. Maybe a good example would be, um, this would be a good example, to get rid of all the pollution in all the world, you get a 100% pollution-free world, right? It's so what happens is it starts off like this, and it gets more and more, like to find every single sheet of paper that has ever been dropped on the ground. Is that going to be expensive? Yeah, because you have to pay people to find it, right? So yeah, they decompose. Yeah, but uh, just just a quick example here. So you can never get to 100% free. It just costs yeah. too much. Does that All make right. sense? Yeah. Um, and so my water filter at home, right? It says it gets rid of 99.9% .9 of fluoride, mm -hmm. right? So it says all the extra stuff. I can't, right? Because then I have to get a bigger machine, a bigger machine, a bigger machine to get rid of yeah. further and further ones. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Questions? So my question was, okay, so you get the negative infinity from that one era going on to the side. And I understand the positive infinity, but I'm a little confused on two because there's only a dot. So they both go yeah, yeah, let's go for it here. So as I'm looking from left to right, I say to myself, do I have a graph all the way over there? Yeah. So then I have a graph. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So if I just say, hey, what's the graph at 1? And you, what you do is you say, like, oh, it's right here. What's the graph at 1.5? It's right here. What's the graph at 1.9? It's like down here. But then when I say, what's the graph at 2? There's no graph. There's my break. And the other one but, but then I go, what's the graph at 1, 2.1? Oh, yeah, 2.1 is all the way up here. So domain is like, if I get a number in, you guys give me a number, right? And if you can't give me a number, there's my break in my domain. Cool. All right, range. Okay, good. I'm so confused at how you know when it includes or doesn't include it. Ah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> closed dots would be including, right? Yeah. Um, open dots not including. And then these guys right here. Whenever, whenever it's it's gonna get super super close to two, like 1.9 works. 1.9 is gonna still work, but right at x equals two, it doesn't work. So if you can get super close, or it's called infinitely close to that number, but not reach the number ever, then it's an open dot. Then it's a parenthesis because you can't get to that number. But usually brackets are always going to be done with closed dots because you're saying, hey, right at that point, I want to include that number. So then you put a closed dot. Okay, anybody with range? Go. I'm already at 100. Good. Oof, we got a break right there, right? Because there's no such thing as y equals 3. Oh, okay. Right, as you're going up and up and up. So now you're looking this way, right? You're going, okay, got a graph, 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 got a graph. I got a graph here. I'm thinking three is our problem, right? Three is our problem, right? Because at two, I still have a graph right here. But at three, there's my in fact, I even put it down like with a little dash line, right? Three has my break. Anything after three is still fine forever. That's weird. Okay. Are we good with C? Jam in one last time of this stuff with D. Tell them if I need more time. Do, 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 do. Yeah, good, good. Sure, no problem. No problem.
Cool. All right, and I got this one here, D. It looks like this. We're gonna be drawing it for a little while. Arrow goes here, goes all the way up here. Oh yeah, closed out this time. Alright, try it yourself if you like, go for it. <clears throat> Think about domain and range. Alright, I'm gonna start it myself as well. Do the same. So I'm gonna go from negative infinity. Go ahead, Maya, if you wanna try it. Perfect, yep. Hi, right, go with that. Perfect. Awesome. All right, anybody else for the range? Go ahead. Keep it. Yes, how come you say negative infinity to infinity? If you're like making it horizontal, like 2D, the, 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 the first line covers one. Perfect. Yep. Uh huh. As you as you're going from the lowest to highest, right? As you're thinking across, right when you get to zero, the graph is here still, right? And right when you get to out above zero, you still have a graph, right? So there's no gaps along my y values. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Go ahead, Miles. The bracket on the one. Um, uh huh. That means that. What does that mean? Yeah, it means that you're including the one as part of your graph. Okay. Um, but then, then there's a parenthesis. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and there's parentheses around the negative infinity because obviously you can't include. Yeah, you can never get to the smallest number in the world, so you can never actually get to infinity. Okay. Good, good there? Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's do that here. Um, class, real quick here. One little thing to decide. Some math, some math books, uh, when instead of putting union, they just put a comma, and they think like that's all fine. Not fine. We're good. Has to be union. We're good. <laughs> okay. Next thing is. Uh, uh, Keithan's uh, question is, is there always union? In terms of interval, it's always union. If you're trying to put set notation when you get to set theory, there is something called intersection. So when you say like, hey, set A includes numbers from 3, 4, and 5, and you're going to intersect it with 1, 2, and 3. So then what's the intersection between these guys? Okay. It's just 3, right? It's the intersection is the things that they have in common. We're good? Yeah. But with union, what you're trying to do is you're going to set up an interval because these guys don't have anything in common. You're just trying to say if these numbers work from here to here, and then they work from here to here. Does that make sense? Yes. So union for intervals, always. Okay, so now let's jam something called the vertical line test. I think we, Did we talk about the vertical line test before in this class or no? Last year, okay. So... Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about it here. So on Monday, right, we talked about the fact that I think, let's see, X's can go to different what's? Y's, is that right? It does not make a function, it doesn't make sense. And so let's do the, it does not make sense. I am, I'm driving a very slow car, are we good? And I do this here, I start off and, and, should have been lower here. Let me draw it out the other way here. So I'm testing a car. I'm going to go from 0 to 60. And so I start off with, I start off with 0, 0, right? Because I'm driving. Time is equal to 0. 
and then I go, right? I go like that. So what happens is the car does go faster and faster, right? Eventually it kind of goes like this, right? Maybe not, maybe not like that way, not, not to infinity. I mean, if you were probably like this. That's true, yeah. So maybe uh, right here would be, because this would be 60 miles per hour, right? Because that's what I'm trying to get to. Actually, no, it wouldn't go in a vacuum at all, unless you have an air tank. My bad. So you so yeah. Okay, so does this make sense for a car? Start off at zero, zero. I start going, and it takes me 5.6 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. Kind of fast. That's pretty. That's slow. You think it's slow? Oh, ouch. Okay, I got a fast 80, 90s car. Okay, but real quick here, does this make sense as far as logic, right? Does this make sense as far as logic? Here's my car, and I do this. And I start off at zero, zero. And I go like this, and I go like this, and like this. Wait, what? What? That is not working. Why? That's a manual car. Yeah. Uh, that is not your car. Why? Because he's That works? That actually is a theory. Okay, so here's why functions work. Here's why we have to make them work in our real world, right? So at two seconds, you can't be going 10 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour, and also 15 miles an hour, right? That is not working. The reason is back to the future. I'm so excited about reaching 80 miles an hour is because that car is literally crazy. It cannot reach 72. Okay, we good there? So here it is. Notice, notice if I did a vertical line. Eli, real quick here. Um, if I did a vertical line coming across, notice this vertical line will only cross this line once at the most. Now, it could be if I cross this over over here, there's no graph at all, right? But notice vertical line, it's only crossed at most one spot. We good? If I start a vertical line here from beginning to end, yeah, well, we have a problem. That's a logical. Yeah, you right there. You cannot be going that fast, then also then slow Yeah, three down. different speeds. You can't. Yeah, yeah. so that's why functions are important. Functions m allow us to see the world as is. It's illogical. As opposed to makes, just not make sense. So we have these little conditions. The fact, for graphing purposes, we have vertical line test. For, remember, for function notation, any, let's see, the same X can go to different Y's. That's what we had on Monday. Okay, so let's jam. Just a yes or no on this one. Yes or no, are these functions or not? So use the vertical line test. Ah, that's why, okay. Use the vertical line test to determine if the graph is a function. Oof, lots of stuff there. So these are probably easy. You just look at it and say yes or no. That's it. Do, do, do. Graph A. If you want to graph it already. Graph B. Graph already. No. And then we go from there. Bro. <laughs> ben, you can't threaten. Not even with the English accent, you can't threaten. No, we ain't. We were American. We speak American. Not English. No, we're not all. All right, let's jam here. So what do you guys say? First one is a yes. It's a yes. It's a function. It passes the vertical line test. Uh, circles, circles, even though circles are cool, but they're not functions. So we got ourselves a no for the circle. Even though we use them, we use them to... Look at a lot of stuff, but they're just not functions, not according to the proper definition. Okay.
So now let's do this here. I'm going to do two things that we did on Monday, but now we're going to do it. We're going to see the vertical, uh, the graphic connection to it here. So how about this? Okay. This should be example three here. So find the zeros of the function. That should be example three. I'm going to change it to example. Find the zeros of the function. Now, I think the way it was worded on Monday, homework, it, was, it said find the values of x such that f of x equals zero. I think that's the way it was worded, at least the homework we went through. Oh, that, that's easy. Yep, absolutely. Then we're gonna see what the what's the graph for it. What are we actually finding when we do this? So, all yours here. So here it is, how about f of x is equal to this right here, and you guys tell me what we should do, because we did it on Monday anyways. Find the zeros of the function. Perfect. We do that right there, right? Oof, I don't think so. So what I see, I see an x squared, and I also see an x. In my mind, I say factoring. Ding, 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 ding. So then I say to myself, okay, am I set equal to zero already? Yep. Yeah, okay, and now I need, oh boy, here it is. I need to factor this guy. So I'm gonna go like this. And you guys, anybody want to no. say what's on top? <laughs> Perfect, how'd you get negative 30, Esther? So it's this guy and these two guys multiplied together. Perfect. You want to finish it off? Or you can say next. Skip. Yeah, go for it. Good. Positive six. Ah, I messed up. See, Positive you six, you did great. Yeah. Perfect. Positive 6, negative 5. Would that work? Two numbers multiply to negative 30, but add to a positive 1 because... Thank you. Because we multiplied by 3 in the beginning. We divide out by 3 now. This becomes a 2. And now, remember, this is kind of like not algebraic logical sense, right? This is just a thing we do on the side, right? That just works all the time. That's it. All right, so I got myself these two parentheses now, perfecto. That is a whole number, it's just two. So I got myself x plus two. And this one is a fraction. So here it is, the stuff on the bottom in my denominator multiplies the x, and our numerator is the loner at the end. All right, and how about, then I set each of them equal to zero. You divide by three because it's three x squared. Yep, uh-huh, because we multiplied here by three to get the name 30. All right, and let's see if we can do this a little faster here. So everybody okay with x equals negative two would have been the answer right right, click here right away? This one can we do it on our minds here? Can we go uh, add five, divide by three? Add five, divide by three. Go ahead, Maya. Um, okay, so first we need to do x plus two. Yeah, um, so do you take the top of like negative five and then you just put the three next to the x? Is that uh -huh, yeah, so that little 3 is going to go right next to the x, and that 5 on top is going to be at the end without the x. Okay, boom, boom. That's the long way. Anybody see another even a little faster shortcut here? I'm thinking like even from the box itself, like from here. Yeah, go ahead, Jaden, talk to me. Uh, you take the two numbers that we took to multiply, negative 30 and x1, and you just take the opposite. Yeah, it's just the opposite of those numbers. So look at this, I, if I got a two here, I'm gonna get a negative two there. A negative five thirds gets me a positive five thirds at the end. So once we do our box, we could actually just be done. We're good? Maya. So you knew to do the boxing method because there was uh, three, right? Or was it because there was uh, because the x to the second? Um, we multiplied by three in the beginning. And then we divide it out because of the three in front. But if it was just like this, 
I could have done the box method that way too. It's just the trinomial, okay, then yeah, and you were good to go. Uh -huh. Say again? It's, it's supposed to be a two. It's my chicken scratch. Okay, we good there? Uh, what does it mean graphically? Now, don't watch you guys to graph this here, but finding zeros over a function, if I were to graph 3x squared plus x minus 10 on a graph sheet of paper, it will look something like this. And you guys tell me what in the world is that. There's my graph. What does x equals negative 2 and x equals 5 thirds mean? Zeros off. Yeah, what does zeros mean? Yeah. And the intercepts, which ones? Cool, here it is, guys, real quick here. So finding values of x such that f of x equals zero means finding the x-intercepts. We good? That's all. So if you say find the zeros of this the equation, <clears throat> it gives us that. Are we good there? So finding the zeros of a function or finding when f of x equals zero really means finding x-intercepts. Okay. Cool. And we've got to do one more thinking here. All right, we're good, good? I'm gonna jam to this here. Oh yeah, no, two things we gotta do. Sorry, I think we have time. So the next part here, something called increasing, decreasing, and constant. We gotta think about, okay, graphs that do this. So what does it mean? Okay. <clears throat> right, let's do this by example here. So it just says this, determine the interval over which the function is increasing or decreasing or constant. So there's a three. So whenever a graph, we look at a graph, right? Either the graph is going up, the graph is either going down, or it's going flat across. There's only three options. Thank you. I'm off by one. Dun -dun -dun. Example four it is. Thank you. Oh. Let's see if I don't tell me when you got it done there. Take a look at example here. And time is almost running out here, so we're gonna. I'm well, gonna. It's not running out yet. It's only starting. To almost to run out. That was useful. Okay, take a look at an example here. I'm gonna skip around on the examples here. This one right here. Let's do an easy one. Okay. <laughs> Can you go back Decrease. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. Tell me when. Yep, I'm good. Awesome. Okay. And go. And so now we're looking interval again. Interval. And whenever we talk about it, we always talk about the x-axis, right? Or the x-intervals. So it's like, it, when is it happening? We don't care how high it goes how low it goes, we just care when it's happening. And it's decreasing. And it's decreasing when to where? Decreasing all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, is that right? This graph is going down all the time. Is that second word or? On. Decreasing on? Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, all right, and then I'm 
gonna skip around just because of time here. Let me jump to this one. Let's skip B, we'll do C. Actually, I'll, I'll just say this is B. This is our new B. All right, this is my graph. It looks kind of funny at first. It goes like this, it goes like that, and it goes like that. And it does this. What happened? I don't know. Whoa. All yours to grab that one. Homie, I, I love the American Psycho vibe. <laughs> Better watch out. Yes, uh, I did. One, two. So this is this is one, two, and three. Existed. Uh, but I'm thinking if there was no blood, then it's still PG-13. Because if it was a blood, then it'd be R. So. Okay, guys, go for it here. So decreasing where? When is it going down? I don't have any red paper. Negative one to what again? Zero. To zero, that's right. Because once it hits the zero marker, then it starts going up. Okay, that's decreasing, that's cool. Ding, 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 ding. What? Yeah, so as you're looking at this graph, the question is, when is this going down? It's going down from here to here. That's the only time it goes down. So the, yeah, if you want to, we would say you can say the time, at the time interval, it's going down. Um, let's see, the other thing is, we don't care what's happening. Notice it's a closed dot at negative one, but we don't ever, increasing, decreasing, we always talk about what's it doing like before or after. We don't talk about what's it doing right at then. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. So for increasing, decreasing, it is always parentheses. It will never be brackets because whenever you talk about increasing, decreasing, you're not talking about a single point. You're talking about points right after each other. And so you don't ever think of happening at that. You're thinking about Anything after negative one is going down, okay. up to zero. Then it turns. Weston? So we all always think of what's happening from left to right. Yes, uh -huh. always left to right. Good, good. Okay, increasing when. Here it is. I'll answer this one. From negative infinity to, to negative one. <laughs> then? And then negative one to From zero, is that right? Notice it starts climbing up again, right? Zero all the way up to three, because what's happening at three? I have no clue what's happening at three. There's a break in my graph, is that right? Then I'm gonna go from? Cool, from three to positive infinity. We good, because just after three, it starts climbing up again, right? There's like a little reset there that happens. Good, good, guys. All right, Joe. So you're always using the domain when like, talking about using the Yeah, yeah, always domain. Always domain with parentheses only. Okay, and let's see, time. Are we good with B? We, let's see, I think we need, I think we need this one here. Miles, still need it? Go for it. Yep, no problem, tell me when. This everybody here. Let's see. Um, I'm just looking around. Lily. Lily Moore is absent, right? Yeah, that's the only. Okay, and this one here. You have to graph this little guy here. <coughs> All right, and if you're good, so I wanted to show you this one because inside the textbook, you don't see arrows, right? But if you see a line that's kind of like coming all the way to the end, 
and don't have a closed dot, you just assume it's going to go on forever that way. We're good. All right, so let's go with uh, increasing. When is this guy increasing? Uh, infinite. Negative infinity to zero. To zero, uh-huh. Zero, yeah. And then? Constant from zero uh, to? Union to? Two to infinity. Are we good there? Yeah. Uh, and then union. Oh. Constant on? Because we don't close the on two, we don't close the What do we do for that? Good, good. Constant. When is this constant on? Notice it has closed dots on here, right? But we don't care about closed dots because it's the interval that makes it happen. So still a parenthesis from zero to? Two. To two. Uh huh. Okay, are we good there? I think that was cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, one more thing to learn from 1.5, and let's jam with this one here. Um, don't need to write this down, but think with me real quickly here. Remember those tests for symmetry we did? I think we did y-axis symmetry. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so hold on. You guys tell me, if we have y-axis symmetry, do we still have a function? Does that guy pass a vertical line test? Yes. Absolutely. So y-axis symmetry allows us to have a vertical line test. Uh, x-axis symmetry. Does, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so in terms of functions, there's no way you get x-axis symmetry. Okay, and then how about this one? Yeah, that one we can still have symmetry about the origin with functions. So here's this. A lot of writing things down. You guys ready? We'll finish up with this one here. So symmetry about the y-axis. We have something called an even function. And kind of like the, uh, the even function that's demonstrated the most to show y-axis symmetry is this little function called f of x equals x squared. Symmetry about the origin, remember, because there's no such thing as a y-axis. Symmetry about the origin, we call these guys odd functions. Odd functions, and the one that demonstrates that the most is x to the third power. That's called the odd function. Notice there's symmetry about the origin for x to the third. Okay, good, good. We'll just do one example real quick, and I'll finish off 1.5 for us. Okay, so lots of lots of writing here. Let me do this here. Let me do the example first, and we'll come back to this slide. Whoever needs to write and finish writing it. So one example, a minute and thirty-five seconds to go. Let's jam. I'm gonna come back to this slide to write down those that need it real quick here. But let's just do the example. So, question is this: Determine if the function is even, odd or neither and how do we do it sorry guys real quick here it'll be too fast i think it's a little too fast i think we will yeah um let's do this we'll save it we'll finish up 1.5 <laughs>